Shalom, shalom, shalom. Grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace, family. Shalom, shalom. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace. Just mean greetings. Grace and peace, grace and peace, grace and peace. Shalom, shalom. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Um, um, I just want to reiterate truth according to the word, family. I'm just jumping on. And I just want to reiterate truth according to his word, brother Darnell. Grace and peace, you already know. Shalom, shalom, family. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I see that. I've been seeing your post, man, and you, you're you going really strong and really hard and really emphasizing on structure and how the man is definitely the authority or the or or the head of the household. And uh, that's, that's definitely truth. That's definitely truth. That's definitely truth, uh, according to the word. We cannot, uh, we cannot, you know, <laughs> we cannot miss up. Order, order. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Once again, family, I'm just jumping on really quick and I just want to reiterate truth according to his word. I'm just jumping on really quick and I just want to reiterate truth according to his word. Uh, once again, as the um, topic of this message is pertaining to, is pertaining to Adam and how Adam is sin. See, a lot of people tend to believe that sin is, sin is, uh, the law of Moses, right? No. If we're going to speak about sin, we need to go back to the very foundation of when sin take place. Sin came into the world through, 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 through the disobedience of Adam. So we can literally classify it as sin as being Adam. If sin was a person, it would be Adam, right? It'll be Adam. Because through the disobedience of Adam, through sin brought forth death and damnation. You know, folks want to go and say, you know, sin is the transgression of the law, right? Sin was the transgression of the law because sin was now atoned or have been condemned through the, through the flesh of Christ. Sin was the transgression of the law. Now we need to go, now we need to go and figure out which law uh, brought forth sin and death. Now you have to go back to Adam. You have to go back to the book of Genesis. Because the father told Adam that you are not to eat from this forbidden tree. You can have all the trees, have all the garden, have all the fruit of the earth. But it's one particular tree I'm commanding you to not to eat from. So Eve, right? At, at the reason judgment came down because the father gave that commandment to Adam. Adam's job was to go and teach his wife to make sure that she understands. She understood that we can have all of the earth, but we just cannot eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So therefore, she will walk into and from throughout the garden in Eden. She came across the devil, right? And the devil convinced her. The devil persuaded her that it's okay to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It is okay for you to not walk in faith. It is okay for you to go against the word. It is okay Eve. You surely will not die. Even though God said you will die. So uh, Eve went back and told her husband. And he ate. And they became, they, they became like gods. Knowing both good and evil. So the father came. And he was looking for Adam. Where are thou Adam? Adam was hiding. Ducking and dodging. He said, we hide it because we're pre we're naked. God responds, well, who told you that thou were naked? You was not just supposed to know that. Then he said, the woman that you gave to me to be my wife, she convinced me and I ate. He was not man enough to take accountability for his own action. The father said, well, dust from, from dust you are, the dust you shall return, right? You will eat your bread and sweat, right? You will die. You will not live forever. Then Eve, who told you to eat from that forbidden tree? She was not woman enough to take accountability for her own action either. She said, the serpent. You say, you know what? I don't want to hear excuses. Because I told y'all to not to eat from that forbidden tree. Eve, you will bring forth child in labor, pain, and, and, and your husband will now rule over you. 
and to the serpent. He said, I will become flesh and I will be the one to destroy you when I manifest myself in Jesus Christ. Believe that. So that was sin, the family. Sin was Adam. We have to understand that, family. Sin was Adam. Righteousness is Christ. Righteousness is Christ. You have to get that revelation because you will start adding on all type of sin. Right? Everything's sin now. Now understand that he condemned sin in the flesh. But you will say this sin, that sin, that sin, this sin. Women can't wear a pants, that sin. If you lie, that sin. If you stole, that sin. If, if you curse, that sin. If you, if, you, if you bear false witness, that sin. No, that is the works of the flesh. You cannot intertwine. You cannot mix the two together. Go and read and study the works of the flesh. That is the attributes of you and I. If you have not yet been born again, that is the attributes of the flesh. Lust, lying, thievery, covenant, gossiping, slander, hate. That is the lightness and that is the attributes of flesh and blood. That's why the words say flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You have to be born again. Adam is sin, family. Adam. When he ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that was sin. That was the activation of sin. These brothers are telling you that everything's sin. Leave it to them. But what about Christ? Did not Christ die for our sin? Did not we got past this situation? Did not the word became flesh to destroy the works of the devil, which is sin? Did not he atone for the sin of mankind? Already? So now if I grow out my hair, I'm in sin, huh? But Christ condemned sin in the flesh. If I wear a white t-shirt, I'm in sin. But Christ condemned sin in the flesh. If I have a Christmas tree up in my house, that's sin. But Christ condemned sin in the flesh. You don't understand Christ. That's why you continue to say this is sin and that sin. Not understanding that sin was finally condemned. In the flesh of Christ. If you want to know what sin is, go back and look at Adam. And if you want to know what righteousness is, continue to believe in Christ. And you will become his righteousness because our righteousness is as filthy rags. The book of Romans, chapter 5. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 12 to 21. The book of Romans, chapter 5, verses, verses 12 to 21. Family, sin had been condemned in the flesh. All of mankind can eat from the tree of life now. All of mankind can be saved. All of mankind can, 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 can be redeemed. All of mankind have now been cleansed. The words that he became a propitiation for our sins. And not for our sin only. Not for the Jews only. But for all of mankind. For all of the world. He could them sin in the flesh. The words that there go the lamb that came to take away the sins of the world. Sin has already been condemned in the flesh. How are you still preaching about sin when the word said there go the lamb that came to take away the sin of the world? How are you still talking about sin when the word said he condemned sin in the flesh? How is it? Grace and peace, grace and peace, hallelujah. We have to get that understanding, family. Everybody can now be saved. Everybody can now be redeemed. Every now, everybody can now be delivered because he condemned sin in the flesh. We have a world full of unbelievers. Who's still waiting to be introduced to Christ. And we have a world full of believers like you and I. Who have already been introduced to Christ. That is what the world consists of. Because sin has already been condemned in the flesh of Christ. Period. The book of Romans chapter, chapter 5 verse 12 to 21. And I read. We're going to get to the root of sin. The word said that sin came through one man disobedience, just like righteousness come through one man obedience. But if you don't have an ear to hear, you won't understand. And I read, it said, therefore, as by one man sin entered to the world and death by sin. By one man sin, by one man disobedience. Enter to the world and death by sin. One man action. 
The root of sin is when Adam ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the wages of sin is death. That's why the father said you have to die. Because you have deactivated, you have activated sin. Sin was deactivated because there was no law. I commanded Adam and Eve to walk by faith and not by sight. Where there is no law, there was no sin. But sin became activated through the law. And the wages of sin is death, right? It says, therefore, as by one man sin entered to the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. All have sinned through Adam. All of us. When Adam ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, all of mankind have sinned. The descendant and the race of Adam all have sinned. All of us. When he ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, all have sinned. All of us have to die. All of our beautiful women now have to bring forth childhood pain because of Adam. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. Sin was not an issue where there was no law. The father said you can have all of the earth, all of the world, but just don't eat from this one particular tree. Before then, Adam and Eve was walking by faith. They were enjoying, enjoying their liberty. That they had. But when they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They have activated sin. And that's why the word had to become flesh. Because then the father needed a perfect sacrifice to atone for the sin of the world. So a generation later the word would become flesh. He will be inside of Jesus or Yahshua. Reconciled the world back unto himself. Jesus will be that a perfect atonement to atone for the sin of the world, to get rid of sin, to remove sin from the earth. Because as long as sin was operating in the earth, no mankind could, be, could have access to eat from the tree of life. No mankind can be saved. No mankind can receive salvation. None of mankind can be delivered because sin was still in the earth. None of mankind could not receive the Holy Spirit. David did not have the Holy Spirit of Christ. Samson and all of his strength could not receive the Holy Spirit of Christ. Moses, who was the most meekest man on earth, could not receive the Holy Spirit of Christ. King David could not receive the Holy Spirit of Christ. Solomon and all of his wisdom could not receive the Holy Spirit of Christ. Joshua and all of his might could not receive the Holy Spirit of Christ because sin was still in the earth. The Christ had, had to remove sin from the earth first before we can receive the Holy Spirit of Christ. The Father cannot dwell in defilement. He cannot dwell where there's sin in the earth. That's why when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they had to leave the presence. They had to leave uh, before the presence of the Lord. They had to be kicked out of the Garden of Eden. He put cherubim and swords around every angle of the tree of life. And he said, get y'all behind from out of him, except that man would take hold of the tree of life and live forever in their sinful nature. Mm -mm. But once Christ condemned sin in the flesh, all of mankind can now receive the spirit of Christ through faith. Remember, we after Christ. We're not before Christ. Moses, Solomon, David, Joshua, Paul, they were before Christ. They were under the law. We're under grace. They were under the old covenant. We're under the new covenant. They were servants. We're now child of the Most High, children of the Most High. They did not have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. Christ told them to be ye perfect. But after his death, he said, we are perfected. You have to understand the language. 
before there was sin in the earth. After he condemned sin in the flesh, there's no more sin in the earth. Peter go and preach the gospel to Cornelius. He said, what you mean, God? You know it's not lawful for others going to the, to the Gentiles. He said, don't you dare call that which I cleanse as common and impure. I had cleansed them just like I had cleansed you. Now go and give them the truth of the gospel. Because that which Adam did, when he made that mistake, I cleansed that. I fixed that. And I finally removed sin from the earth. It said, for until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam unto Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the likeness of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Sin is Adam, family. When brothers begin to talk that sin stuff, what is sin? My response is Adam. What do you mean, brother Tobiah? Adam. Well, Adam brought forth sin into the world. What did Adam do? He, oh, he, he ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Sin is Adam. Righteousness is Christ. What about lying? What about thievery? What about hate? What about gossip? That is the works of the flesh. That is not sin. That is who we are. That is the makeup of flesh and blood. That is the makeup of humanity until they receive the Christ and be born again. Go read Galatians chapter 5. It said the works of the flesh or the attribute of the flesh is lying, lust, hate, envy, gossip. But the attribute of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. But what is sin? Sin is Adam. What is righteousness? Righteousness is Christ. What is sin? It be condemned in Christ's flesh. What is righteousness? Those who believeth in Christ. We have to understand what is sin. Because these brothers will tell you that if you have a Christmas tree in your house, that's sin. If you celebrate your birthday, that's sin. If you eat it, if you eat a particular way, that's sin. If you if you if you if you wear a white shirt, that's sin. If your hair is long and long down to your back, that's sin. If your wife wears pants, that's sin. But the last time that I checked, sin was condemned in the flesh. How are you able to go around and say your sin has been forgiven? But within the same breath, in the same sentence, you will say that I need to turn from sin. Are you double-minded? Are you unstable in all of your ways? Either my sin has been forgiven and he condemned sin in the flesh as it been written, or is sin still walking to and from the earth? The Holy Spirit cannot dwell where there's sin. The Holy Spirit cannot dwell if sin is still activated. Sin has to be deactivated. In order, in order for the Holy Spirit to walk to and from. Brothers, learning a few scriptures to talk about we need to turn away from sin. What sin? John said, they go to the lamb that came to take away the sin of the earth. Either sin still operating and walking to and from or John is a liar. Either Christ took away the sin of the world or somebody lying. I'm going to tell you what the word said. There ain't no sin. That's why all of mankind can be saved right now. They're willing to hear to the gospel. You two been preaching about sin when you should be worried. You when you should be preaching the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Are you saying that Christ's finished works is, is not greater than what Adam did? Why are you so focused on brothers and sisters turning away from sin? The same sin had been condemned in the flesh. You should be preaching the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Brother need to hear the gospel not sin. Brother need to hear the gospel and not the law. Brother need to hear the gospel and not damnation. Brother need to hear the gospel of Christ and not know Esau the white man. Right? It says, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. 
For if through the offense of one, many became dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, had abounded unto many. And not as, not, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to damnation, but the free gift is of many offense unto justification. For if by one man offense death reigned by one man, much more that they which receive the abundance of grace, and if the gift of righteousness shall reign in the life by one man, Jesus Christ. So by one man, sin and death reign into the world, and also by one man, life and righteousness reign through Christ. Right, we should we 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 should be uh resting in the finished works of Christ. Hallelujah. That's what we should be doing. We should be preaching and professing the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ. That's what we should be doing. But we're not. We preaching the law. We preaching sin. We preaching damnation. We're not teaching the ministration of reconciliation. We teaching death, life, and death is in the power of the tongue. We're teaching death instead of life. These brothers swear they're teaching life, but they're teaching death. Getting our brothers to, to return back to the law. Getting our sisters to put their hope in the law. When you should be teaching life. The law is not of faith. But it takes faith for you to receive the love of Christ. It takes faith for you to be saved. Because by grace are we saved through faith. Hallelujah. For if by one man offense death reigned by one, much more that they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in the life by one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to damnation. Even so, by one, the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. What Adam did Damnation came upon all man. When, when he ate from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, sin came upon all man. Damnation came upon all man. All men were worthy of death. That's why it was significant for the word to become flesh. The word had to become flesh. God had to take on flesh to save his people from their sin because me and you would have been spending eternity in the lake of fire. Me and you. Me and you would be would have been spending eternity in the lake of fire. The word had to become flesh, family. Because when Adam disobeyed the Father and brought forth sin and death into the world, we were all doomed. When sin bound, grace bound that much more. All of us were going to the lake of fire. The word had to become flesh. All of mankind was heading straight to the lake of fire because of Adam. But when the word became flesh, that body was used to atone for the sin of mankind. He condemned sin in the flesh. Now all of mankind has been cleansed. All of mankind can be saved. All of mankind can be redeemed. All we have to do is believe it in the gospel. It's your job. Who are you who know Christ already to introduce other to Christ? But they're not. They introduce the other to, to, to the law. We need to return back to the law. We need to keep the old covenant. We need to wear tassels and fringes and turn away from our sins. You are a sinner that needed to be saved by grace. This is what they're teaching. Even, even the preachers. You're a sinner that's saved by grace. You can't drink, that's a sin. You can't gamble, that's a sin. You can't lust after sin. I can't lust after my own wife. I can't desire my own wife. You can't be fruitful and multiply on the Sabbath, that's a sin. That ain't no sin. Adam is sin. When Adam ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that's sin. But the word has already became flesh. And he condemned sin in the flesh. It ain't no sin. Don't come to me with that sinful stuff. 
I'm saved because I believe it in the gospel. You can be saved because you can believe in the gospel. If you went in to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. We have a world full of believers and unbelievers. We have Ray Ray and Pook and them still walking in darkness who still can be saved if they wanted to adhere to the light of Christ. Sin is not an issue. It's just that faith come by hearing. And hearing come by the word of God. Stop talking about the letter J so much and go and introduce Christ to Ray Ray Pook and them because they too want to be saved as well. But you on social media going back and forth about a name. His name ain't Jesus. His name is Yahweh Shai. His name ain't Yahweh Shai. His name is Yeshua. His name ain't Yeshua. His name is Yeshua. His name ain't Yeshua. His name is Yahushua. Ray Ray Pookie them have been cleansed and saved through the blood of Christ. They want to be saved as well. They want to hear the gospel as well. Faith come by hearing and hearing come by the word of God. You have the gospel on your heart. You have the gospel on your mind. You have the gospel on your tongue. Go and introduce others to Christ, family. The death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ. That's what it's all about. It ain't about them turning away from sin. Sin be condemned in the flesh. It's about them becoming believers now. They are walking in disbelief. They like the apostle when Christ has resurrected. Except that I put my hand into his side and see the print in his nail. I will not believe. That's what them is. That's what they are. They just unbelievers who, who have not yet received the truth of the gospel. They've been cleansed. They can receive the gospel. They can receive the gospel, family. We're not doing no one any justice by saying how defiled, how wicked, how sinful they are. Because Christ came to cleanse them. And they cleanse. Tell them how beautiful and how loving and how zealous they are. So that they can, so that they can turn that zeal that they have for Father, miss it with the faith of the gospel, and be saved. Why are you calling me wicked? I just don't know Christ. Why are you calling? Why are you telling me that I'm a sinner that 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 need to be saved? You're not making me feel good by calling me a sinner. A sinner cannot receive salvation. There will not be not one sinner in the kingdom. Don't classify me as a sinner. Don't tell me how wicked I am. Don't tell me how evil I am. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And you spend death at me. When I want to hear Christ. When I want to hear life. When I want to be saved. I just don't know. I want to get to know Christ for myself. I need his spirit. Faith come by hearing. And hearing come by the word of God. Please introduce Christ unto me. So that I can be saved. Like that thief who was on the cross. What is sin? Sin is Adam. What is righteousness? Righteousness is Christ. Understand the two. And let's get saved. And it said, and, it said, and therefore as by the offense of one judgment came upon all man to damnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification unto life. For as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Once again, what is sin? Sin is Adam. Sin was the transgression of the law. Was. Was. Sin came into the world when Adam ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Let's get to the origin. Let's get to the root of it. Let's go back to Genesis, which means the beginning. And let's really find out what sin is. See, you still think sin is the law. The law of Moses. The Ten Commandments. When you go against the Ten Commandments. No, the Ten Commandments is who we are. We're liars. We're thieves. That's our DNA. That's our makeup. <laughs> it's nothing for us to lie. 
Folks will preach about God and lie right in your faith in the same sentence because that's who we are as flesh and blood man. This is our makeup. It's not sin because Adam sinned. It's who we are. We are liars and great at it. We are thieves and great at it. We will slander someone to death and we great at it. That's why he said you have to be born again. Because flesh and blood, your makeup, your selfish, stingy, lying, evil makeup cannot inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> the works of the flesh are just who we are. Just like the works of the spirit is who Christ is. It's not sin because Adam is sin. It's just who we are. And that's why you have to be born again. For as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. That's who we are. We after Christ, after his death. Christ already atoned for the sin of the world. He already handled that. Now everyone who believeth in him is righteous. Before Christ laid down his life, David was a sinner. Solomon was a sinner. Moses was a sinner because of Adam. Christ did not yet condemn sin in the flesh. But our generation is after Christ, after his death. We was never sinners. We all have sinned because of Adam. And we will still be classified as sinners if Christ would never condemn sin in the flesh yet. But he already did that. Now we don't have no sin to turn away from. We just need to hear the gospel, believe in the gospel, and have Christ's righteousness imputed onto us. Period. Because we're after his death. We're not before his death. Before his death, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. They were not considered sons and daughters of God. They were servants. They were not under the grace. They were under the law. They was not in the second covenant. They was in the first covenant. You have to understand the language of the word. Before Christ, it was a little different than after Christ. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. They were flesh and blood man sending Uriah on the front line to be slaughtered just to have his wife. Solomon laying down with strange women. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. They could have their mind renewed. They was not yet perfected because all those events came after Christ and after his death. After his death, we are born again. After his death, we receive the Holy Spirit. After his death, we under grace. After his death, we have been forgiven. After his death, we are sons and daughters of God through faith in Jesus Christ. This is the generation that we're living in after Christ. Before Christ, before he condemned sin in the flesh then yes, you will have sin to turn away from. But after death, we don't have sin to turn away from because he already cleansed what Adam messed up. For if by one man disobedient, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. That as sin had reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ, who is thy Lord and thy Savior. All I'm saying, family, because people don't really understand the gospel, they don't really understand Christ. They don't really understand his mercy, his mission and his purpose and why he came from. He came to give us life in abundance. He came to give us his spirit. He came to redeem us. He came to give us salvation. He came to give us hope. He also came to condemn sin in the flesh. Therefore, you have no sin to turn away from. You just have to become believing. You have to stop walking in disbelief, in disbelief and begin to walk in, in belief. You know, all of mankind has been cleansed. Go read the book of Acts. When he was sending Peter to go preach the gospel to, to Cornelius, Cornelius refused because he said, listen, they still unclean, which what we call unclean. He said, don't you dare call them unclean no more because I have cleansed them. I have cleansed all of the world. Through Christ. I remove sin from the earth. 
Christ condemned sin in the flesh, and your sin has already been forgiven. Now, what you must do is get up and walk. Brush yourself off. Dust yourself off. Brush the dirt off your shoulder. And begin to walk by faith and not by sight. Because through sin, through Adam, sin came into the world. But through Christ, righteousness came into the world. Ain't no more sin in the earth. None. If you made a mistake, that's, that's all it was, a mistake. You probably did lie. It was a mistake. <laughs> it's not far-fetched for me to believe that you lied. You lied. It happened. You probably did put your hand on your neighbor. It was just a mistake. The word said, just man falls seven times and get back up. It was just a mistake. It was not sin. Because Adam is sin. Adam is the only man that ever sinned against the father directly. He was kicked out of the presence of the Lord. And the father was dealing with us through angels. Because the father could not dwell among humanity because of their fallen nature. But when he sent Christ into the world and Christ finally condemned sin in the flesh and gave us his righteousness, now the spirit of God is back dwelling, with the, dwelling within us in our hearts. It's before Christ and it's after Christ. Before Christ, you had to be ye perfect. After Christ, you already been perfected. Before Christ, you was under the law. After Christ, you under grace. Before Christ, you were not yet forgiven yet. But after Christ, you have been forgiven. Before Christ, they did not have the Holy Spirit. But after Christ, they did have the Holy Spirit. Before Christ, they was removed from the presence of the Lord, dealing with angels. But after Christ, he had baptized his spirit inside of you to help lead and guide you into all truth. Adam is sin, and Christ is righteousness. You have no sin to turn away from. You just have to become a believer. By hearing the message of the gospel, receiving it, accepting it, and becoming saved through the blood of the Lamb. Grace and peace. Shalom.